click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous topic we have discussed about the uses of K2CR207 and now in this topic we are going to talk about the preparation of KMNO4 from pyrolusite ore. So now let us understand what are the steps involved in it and what are the reactions that are being involved in it so as to obtain KMNO4. So friends, here we are going to talk about the preparation of KM104 from pyrolusite ore. And in that case, let me tell you that is there are different methods and there are different techniques so as to obtain KM104 from the ore. But here I'm going to talk about a specific reaction. And in this case, let me talk about the main two-step reactions. And in that case, let me talk about the first one. That is step one, that is conversion of that is MnO2, that is nothing but pyrolusite ore into potassium manganate. So in this case, the ore that is what we have obtained so that is nothing but MnO2 so in that case MnO2 is treated with that is a base like KOH in presence of that is KNO3 that is potassium nitrate so therefore the product that is what we could get is we could get that is K2 MnO4 along with that of the other byproducts are that is KNO2 that is potassium nitrite along with that of that is water that is H2 so in this case this is the product that is what we have got but the main product that is what we have got is that is potassium magnate so that's the reason that we have converted that is MnO2 that is the pyrolusite ore to the potassium magnate and now this potassium magnate that has been obtained so this is what we have obtained but this is not the final product that is what we need so we have to basically we have to convert this K2 MnO4 that is potassium magnate to potassium permanganate for that let us understand step number two so the step two is oxidation of K2 MnO4 that is potassium magnate to K MnO4 that is potassium permanganate so here basically we are going to talk about the oxidation of this K2 MnO4 but there are two different methods so talking about the first one that is chemical oxidation so in this case we are using chemical reagents so as to do an oxidation process and that is how basically we can obtain K MnO4 so for that let me give you one of those reactions suppose in this case suppose if we are using two moles of K2 MnO4 and suppose if it is reacted with chlorine so this kind of reaction is basically known as a disproportionation reaction and that is how basically we could obtain that is KMnO4 along with that of that is KCl as a byproduct so here basically we have to balance the reaction and that's the reason that we could obtain two moles of KMnO4 and two moles of KCl so this is how basically by doing the oxidation of K2 MnO4 we could obtain KMnO4 that is potassium permanganate but the thing is this chemical oxidation is not very efficient in fact more in fact one third part of the reagents that are being used only that can give us that is KMnO4 and that's the reason its efficiency is very much less so for that suppose if we have to that is obtain a KMnO4 which is pure as well as which is highly efficient so in that case let me introduce you the next reaction that is electrolytic oxidation so in electrolytic oxidation we have also understood that is in step number one that is what we have obtained that is K2MnO4 that is potassium magnet so that potassium magnet is basically introduced in a cell that consists of that is two iron rods that is one is anode and one is cathode and that is basically dissolved in water molecule so based on that there are two kind of reactions that is one will be at anode and one will be at cathode so based on that let me give you the reactions that is at anode obviously we understand that is oxidation occurs so in that case the thing that is what we have obtained in step number one is K2MnO4 so in that case here basically we have got that is MnO4 2 minus so obviously suppose if it undergoes an oxidation reaction so therefore it will give us that is MnO4 minus 1 plus electron so suppose at cathode suppose if we have to write the reaction so therefore the reaction that occurs at cathode is always reduction and since we have that is dissolved the K2MnO4 in water and that's the reason that water molecules consist of that is H plus as well as OH minus ions in an equilibrium state and in that case basically the H plus ion it will take away the electron so it will take the electron so as to obtain that is H2 gas but here we have to balance it so therefore I'm using two moles of H plus it will take 
two moles of electrons so as to obtain h2 so here also we have to balance the reaction so in that case this will be two electrons this will be two moles of mno4 and this is two moles of mno4 two minus so based on that an overall reaction that is what we could get is we could get that is the hydrogen gas that would be liberated at the cathode and here basically we could get that is kmno4 in a pure form and also in a crystal form and the efficiency is more compared to that of the chemical oxidation so now let me give you the overall reaction that takes place in this cell therefore the overall reaction that takes place in the electrolytic oxidation is basically suppose here we see two moles of that is k2 mno4 it will be reacted with water molecules and also we are talking about that is the oxidation so in that case we could obtain over here that is two moles of kmno4 along with that of two moles of koh so therefore this is that is kmno4 that is the pure crystal that is what we could get and also we understand that is the color is very dark purple and that is what we could get so that is how basically we can obtain the pure and dark purple crystals of that is KMnO4. So therefore this was the method to obtain KMnO4 and this were nothing but the preparation of KMnO4 from using different reagents as well as from its own. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood this reaction very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time. Till then don't forget to subscribe to channel. Thank you so much.